Hey up everyone, I'm back again. So uh, I managed to pick up the LG G pad, uh, which is 8.3 inch tablet, uh, because I've been quite interested in seeing uh, what other 8 inch tablets there are on the Android market. Uh, and uh, as we know, HTC may be bringing out a 8 inch uh, Nexus tablet later on in the year. Uh, which I'm quite looking forward to. However, if it looks like the HTC One M8, then it might come with uh, quite a premium. Uh, but some of these uh, tablets, which have been on the market for a while now, um, are very affordable in comparison. You can pick one of these up for about uh, 190 quid uh, from most places, and uh, it offers you a Snapdragon processor, Snapdragon 600, uh, and uh, two gigs of RAM, uh, and 8.3 inch screen, so bigger than uh, the Nexus 7 2013, for example. Uh, and I have to say, I'm quite uh, happy with the build quality of the device. It feels uh, very solid in the hand, uh, not too heavy. Uh, it, uh, it's made primarily of like a high grade plastic uh, which does feel quite uh, solid uh, but uh, not quite as premium as uh, for example my Lenovo Yoga 8 which is very metallic uh, but uh, it does uh, come with uh, the standard array of things such as uh, 5 uh, megapixel camera on the back which does support autofocus. Uh, unfortunately, no uh, uh, flash though. So uh, I am expecting basic performance from that, uh, as well as uh, speakers, which uh, are actually on the back, uh, which are located here. So you got two speakers on the back, uh, which. Uh, as far as I'm aware, they're, they're nothing uh, special, they're not Dolby certified or anything. Uh, so uh, you do have uh, micro SD expandability, thankfully, as well. And that's uh, via the flap at the top. So you can put one in there, top it up to, I think it supports up to 32 gigs, but it could be 64 gigs unofficially. Uh, and uh, micro USB at the bottom, very nice standard place, headphone jack at the top and volume keys and power button on the side. So uh, one thing I do like about it is how small the bezels are, as you can see it's very, uh, makes most of uh, the screen real estate compared to some other tablets. Uh, but uh, in general I'm quite pleased with it. Uh, I think that uh, it feels quite solid in the hand and uh, it's quite uh, easy to hold and just uh, use as you would as a tablet. Uh, I don't even think about using it with one hand though because that's just not going to happen. Uh, but uh, you do also have a front facing camera as well which is 1.3 megapixels for your selfies and uh, video chatting. Supports uh, HD 720p recording, which is nice. Uh, the actual display on this device uh, is an LCD display, uh, which, uh, as you may know, uh, is uh, an IPS display at 273 ppi, which is considered full HD. Uh, so, uh, in terms of the uh, viewing experience of doing certain things uh, you'll find that uh, it's very nice for like reading websites etc uh, because you don't really have to zoom in at all uh, everything the, the text appears very crisp uh, and uh, you can zoom in if you want but you easily make out everything from the overview of it. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do that with something like uh, my Lenovo Yoga 8, for example, which uh, does look a bit uh, uh, less resolution when you look at something like this.
it really uh, stands out when it when it comes to like uh, newspaper type uh, websites which have a lot of different content on them you can really uh, see kind of uh, the text really crisply and it's really uh, nice to behold so uh, the display is very nice uh, looking at it head on uh, looking at it from the sides as well uh, the viewing angles are very nice uh, they're not the best it does uh, wash out a bit in comparison to some of the more recently released tablets such as the uh, Gab Galaxy Tab S which is an AMOLED display uh, or the iPad Air um, but I think most people will be happy with it uh, there is only a little bit of washing out as you do look at it from the sides um, and uh, because it uh, does go quite bright uh, it's not going to be too much of an issue viewing angles out uh, viewing the actual screen outdoors again uh, is very easy because it's uh, IPS LCD so it doesn't struggle like uh, some uh, AMOLED screens so, uh, I'm happy with the display on the device I think that uh, LG have done a good job with it and after all that is uh, why you buy a tablet for the display uh, one thing that uh, I would say that LG could improve upon in future is the uh, kind of uh, very fingerprint fingerprint magnet type uh, front uh, which doesn't have many oleophobic properties as you can see it tends to f pick up a lot of fingerprints very fast and becomes very smudgy so you might want to bring around a silk cloth or something to give it a wipe every now and again uh, I do like the way you can double tap the screen like the LG G2 which does work most of the time and then just quickly put it on which is nice uh, you can also use that to turn it off as well so uh, yeah you know uh, very nice uh, viewing experience on this tablet uh, in terms of the actual performance I have to say my opinion is mixed on it you know it uh, does have uh, vastly superior specs compared to my Lenovo Yoga 8 however it uh, does seem to struggle when doing certain things uh, such as uh, like uh, doing different things all at once uh, it seems to get quite laggy here and there I don't know whether it's the uh, in fact I, I'm pretty sure it's the actual skin LG skin uh, which is obviously the older LG G2 type skin um, it uh, does seem to uh, lag quite a bit in comparison to the LG G2 uh, I think the LG G2 has a Snapdragon 800 so that uh, helps disguise the lag a bit more uh, but I have switched this to ART runtime to see if that helped with the performance and it has a little bit uh, it's a little smoother than it was before uh, but as you can see when you you know dipping and diving between different apps it's not too bad it's uh, very usable in most cases however when you when you for example using the tablet and things start to update in the background that really does grind the tablet down to a halt to a halt and uh, it's quite annoying because uh, as I said these types of specs should be able to run Android quite well um, but uh, I don't really find it significantly faster than my Lenovo Yoga 8 which uh, is a testament to you know the, the decent op optimization uh, on Android KitKat for that device but most people won't uh, be unhappy with the performance on this uh, device you know it uh, it generally does the job for most things so uh, if we try uh, using the maps
quite fluid experience. Very hard to get some of these devices to actually lag when you want them to lag. They seem to do it when they basically when you least expecting it. Uh, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to reproduce it uh, on camera. But uh, just bear in mind that uh, it's not the smoothest of tablets, and it does uh, it could do with probably rooting uh, and flashing uh, like an LG G3 ROM if one exists or uh, just the stock KitKat ROM uh, ASOP but obviously not everyone knows how to do that so uh, for people who don't know how to do that uh, you would expect it to be uh, optimized for your use when you receive it uh, it does come with 16 gigs internal storage which is decent uh, as well as that expandability so you won't find yourself running out of storage very quickly uh, I think uh, some of it is taken up, however, with the LG software, which you do get quite a lot of stuff baked on there. So I only have 8 gigs available, and 2.61 gigs is taken up by apps. Uh, and uh, the rest, I don't know where that is. But yeah, you know, uh, I think the micro SD does save that. Uh, you are getting uh, all the suite of uh, connectivity options such as uh, Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth, uh, I don't think uh, you get NFC unfortunately. Uh, you do get vibration feedback though with the tablet which is nice uh, and it doesn't feel too uh, low quality especially when you're typing on the device it feels quite uh, nice uh, it comes with uh, a GPS module as well uh, which you can use for uh, using the maps as uh, I've just shown you uh, and uh, you can set that on uh, high accuracy or just GPS mode I usually have it on uh, battery saving if I'm not using uh, it to help uh, the battery on this device. Uh, but uh, it has most of the stuff that most users will need. Uh, and uh, moving on to the camera, you have, as I said, a five megapixel shooter on this one. So uh, it's uh, it's a basic tablet camera. You know, it's not going to uh, substitute for the thing in your pocket uh, but where it can be useful is if like uh, you take this uh, on holiday or something and uh, you want to just uh, take a quick uh, snap of something without using your phone uh, the autofocus is quite quick which is nice uh, and uh, it does take the shot quite quickly as well uh, and uh, you do get quite a lot of uh, modes that you'd find on the LG G2 uh, such as uh, your autofocus modes, uh, your image size which strangely enough was set on this option uh, so I did change it to 5 megapixel you can change the white balance so uh, you can uh, put it on incandescent if you're under harsh lighting but I tend to leave things on auto as you know and just let it do its own job we do get beauty face on there as well which is nice uh, you can uh, do a panorama using uh, quite a nice uh, virtual reality type of interface So uh, I don't have much space to show you 
how this works but you get the idea it's a bit like um, photosphere on the nexus devices uh, so uh, obviously you do have that front facing camera as well which is quite nice uh, the tablet does surprisingly film in full HD as well uh, so you can get to that in the settings uh, as well as the other less resolution options uh, you can put on anti-shaking as well which uh, will make things a little bit smoother uh, and uh, video recording you know it uh, does the job but it's nothing special certainly not a replacement for a dedicated camera uh, but it is definitely better than my Lenovo Yoga 8 at the end of the day you're not going to use it as a camera device uh, the main thing is the screen uh, as well as the the staying power uh, the battery life and uh, I'm happy to say that the battery life on this is distinctly average uh, it's, it's coming from my Lenovo Yoga 8 with its uh, massive 6000 mAh battery uh, it could be considered to be uh, a little bit poor but I'm going to be quite fair with it and uh, not slag it off too much because it does have some decent staying power uh, the battery is a 4600 mAh battery uh, and as you can see it stayed on 30% for the duration of this review so uh, if you use it as a, a tablet that most people use it for a bit of video watching you know consuming content doing a bit of creative uh, doing a bit of work uh, and stuff like that then uh, you should easily last a day with it uh, a little bit of web browsing using the maps etc should be no sweat for this device but if you start hammering it you know doing your torrenting and things like that uh, as well as uh, just uh, playing video games I think the full HD screen uh, as well as the processor will start to eat away at that battery quite quickly and you might get uh, less runtime. Uh, LG have put in uh, a uh, battery uh, optimization app similar to the uh, LG G2 so you can uh, put that on which will disable some of the stuff on there uh, such as uh, turn off the Wi-Fi when it's not in use uh, as well as you know disable vibration but it's quite basic and uh, I think most people won't really need to use it so uh, in terms of uh, the actual uh, benchmarking of the device we can have a quick look at the GPS performance uh, which uh, should be quite okay on this device would help if I had uh, GPS module on start that again Well, that was quite quick, a lot quicker than my uh, Lenovo Yoga 8. And those triangles, can you can see that uh, it's using the GLONASS. So uh, the accuracy is quite decent within 30 feet. Uh, and it can see 21 uh, and uh, is using 12. So uh, shouldn't have any issues with the GPS on this device. Uh, particularly if you like to use your tablet when you're out and about uh, we can have a quick look at Quadrant as well uh, 
I've already ran the quadrant to save you the misery of uh, watching it but uh, it scores 7705 which uh, is nearly twice the amount of my Lenovo Yoga so uh, in terms of uh, raw performance it's all there uh, I think it's just dying for me to uh, root it and rom it to get the full uh, smoothness of it that it should be given Uh, to take to help the battery, I have actually uh, turned the location onto power saving, as I've shown you, uh, battery saving, which uh, will help with that. Uh, in standby mode, it tends to also do quite well in the battery life, which is very good uh, because there will be obviously significant times when you won't be using the tablet in comparison to your smartphone which you have on a lot of the time uh, but uh, yeah you know uh, it's uh, a decent stayer and should last you through your work day uh, in regards to those speakers on the back I wasn't expecting much from them uh, coming from the Dolby speakers on my Lenovo Yoga 8 uh, which are uh, situated on the front, which is uh, an excellent place to put them. Uh, but uh, I have been pleasantly surprised by the output of the speakers, which uh, can get to quite decent volumes. I'll give you a quick uh, demonstration now. So uh, very decent even when it's rested on a table, it doesn't seem to uh, block out the sounds too much, uh, which is always uh, quite uh, an annoyance. Uh, and uh, also because the speakers are horizontally uh, and not like situated where you'd hold the device, you're not going to block them, block them when you're holding the device, which is quite good. Uh, so uh, not too bad there in terms of the speakers still is quite low though compared to some mobile devices such as obviously the HTC One M8 or the uh, Moto X even or even the Moto G you know they blurt out a hell of a lot of sound for saying how small they are um, but uh, it's not too bad uh, I think most people obviously will be listening to music through the headphone jack though uh, and uh, with the uh, LG software you can uh, put on some optimizations uh, in the settings which uh, increase the bass or reduce it depending on your uh, want from that uh, but unfortunately these settings don't filter into the Google Play uh, app which is what I use mostly anyway for my music because I've got it all stored stored there on the cloud so uh, that is a bit annoying to say the least as you can see you go to uh, settings and uh, no equalizer option unfortunately which is a shame but uh, if you do save your music locally onto the device that's not going to be an issue uh, in terms of the actual software experience of the device you run in Android KitKat 4.4.2 so uh, not the latest software by any means but uh, quite decent nevertheless at least it's not Jelly Bean uh, and uh, you do uh, obviously get the old LG G2 type skin on it 
uh, which we all know and hate maybe but uh, in reality I don't mind it you know but coming from the old GG3 skin on my G2 it is a bit ugly and uh, it's one of the reasons why I would be looking to flash and root this device or should I say root and flash it or install a Nova launcher to help uh, it look a bit nicer uh, but uh, LG do put on quite a lot of stuff on there, some of it which is uh, helpful, others of it uh, not so helpful. Uh, some of the standout things that I've found on it include the uh, uh, quick memo type functionality, which uh, as you can see you can quickly uh, write on the screen, kind of like a Galaxy Note device. Uh, but it does make me feel like reaching down here for a stylus uh, which would be nice but you don't get that obviously uh, and then you can uh, share these notes to your social networking uh, or your cloud accounts or you can save them locally onto the device uh, so that is quite a nice touch uh, one strange thing that I have noticed with that is sometimes it doesn't go away, it just stays on the screen, I'm not sure why that is, but uh, other things on here, uh, Q slide, I'm sure you're familiar with this, you uh, can open up small types of apps uh, all over the screen if you like to do multitasking. Uh, Well, you can only open up two, it seems. So, uh, a little bit of multitasking there, which is nice. Uh, quick remote, you can set up a remote to control your TV, uh, which is quite an easy process. Uh, you just follow the instructions and then you can like program it. Uh, it comes also with the uh, slide aside type app which uh, you may never use uh, let's see if I can get it to work whenever I've tried to use it it doesn't seem to work for me you see it's uh, quite finicky uh, there we go <laughs> so you go from the right to the left then uh, and uh, that saves the app so that you can go back to it to me it just seems completely pointless you know when most things do save anyway uh, and then you go back to it using the normal way uh, uh, such as you know the multitasking window uh, but I guess some of these things are a bit gimmicky uh, as well like um, the uh, smart screen and the, s the smart video so if you're watching a video uh, it will pause it when your eyes come away from it uh, and the uh, smart screen the tablet will turn itself off it doesn't detect your eyes for a bit however the uh, knock-on thing is absolutely fantastic and uh, many of the manufacturers have copied that such as HTC with its 1M8 uh, and uh, I think uh, Nokia had it for LG on its Lumia devices. I'm not sure who was first with it then, but uh, it is excellent and uh, allows you to quickly uh, do that from nearly any screen. So uh, just make sure that you're hitting this part of the screen if you're not on the home screen. Uh, but you do get a lot of fancy transitions as well with the LG's screen uh, and uh, you know you can choose like a blackout effect for the screen off uh, with the lock screen you can uh, have a different uh, swipe effect I got it on white hole because to me that's the cleanest one but you can have uh, like a ripple effect as well which is weird uh, 
crystal. Again, lots of uh, groovy LG animations on this. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, there's some uh, also uh, apps that allow you to connect to your other LG devices, uh, such as your LG G2 or G3. Uh, this particular app allows you to uh, pair to it and uh, receive text messages on your phone, kind of like Mighty Text. Uh, and uh, use your tablet to send messages to your phone which then your phone sends to someone else. Uh, useful if you don't want to stay near your phone all the time when you're using the tablet. Uh, Motorola also do that using Motorola Connect. So overall I'm uh, quite uh, have mixed feelings in regards to the software experience. On one hand, I do like the small things that uh, uh, LG have put in, such as the knock-on, which does work most of the time. But when it doesn't work, it is quite annoying. Um, but other things, such as the uh, S voice, uh, the voice mate thing, I'd never use. Uh, I find it to be quite inferior compared to Google's voice recognition services. Give it a go though. Okay, what's the time? It's 15.20, August 25th. What's the weather tomorrow? Weather for that date is not provided. Oh really? No weather tomorrow. Navigate to Scotland. Searching for directions from current location to Scotland. Yeah, so if I did uh, that on my Moto X, it would actually start navigation. So it's uh, it would take me one step ahead kind of thing. What's the share price for HTC? Searching the web for what's the share price for HTC. So yeah, it's giving me the information, can't fault that, but uh, it is quite basic, you know, and uh, quite forgettable. Uh, so uh, as you can see, I have installed uh, the normal calendar from Google. I don't like the LG calendar, uh, and uh, I will be using uh, the stock calendar for the foreseeable future uh, and there's some other stuff on there obviously such as LG backup uh, as well as the clock app etc which are all very functional uh, if not aesthetically pleasing uh, but I think that uh, software experience wise it's a decent tablet uh, I think that uh, in terms of the actual optimization of it they could do a little bit better because uh, as I have mentioned it does slow down quite a lot when you're hammering it and the 600 should be able to take it uh, if uh, my Moto X uh, running uh, Snapdragon S4 uh, with uh, 2 gigs of RAM can handle things very smoothly uh, without any lags or anything then uh, I think that uh, a Snapdragon 600 should be able to handle it. Yes, it is a full HD screen, it is bigger, uh, but uh, I don't think that should be too much of an issue. I do think it's to do with the heavy skin, 
but overall uh, I think that it's uh, a very nice tablet um, I think that uh, LG have done a good job at uh, replicating the uh, experience of the LG G2 on the device um, I do wish they'd have put a Snapdragon 800 in there uh, because uh, you don't really notice like the lag on the LG G2 uh, as you notice it on this device uh, and I do uh, hope that they push out LG G3 ROM on it or I'm just gonna have to do it myself uh, but other than that, you know, it's an excellent tablet uh, for quite a decent price. As I say, you can get one now for under two under two hundred quid. So it could be worth looking at uh, when compared to the Nexus Eight, which no doubt will be quite expensive. Uh, so uh, yeah, that about covers it. Uh, so uh, if you've got any questions or uh, if you like the video, please subscribe or make a comment, uh, and uh, I'll be back again shortly. Cheers.